Hello, thank you for joining us for our online service here at House of Power Outreach. I'm Pastor Tori, Pastor Rita, our senior pastor in our church. So thankful and delighted for you to be able to join us for this online service. Let's pray and then we're going to get right into the message. Dear Heavenly Father, we just praise you. We thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord God, for it's a word in due season for us. We thank you, Father God, that I decrease, you increase. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk about our, our origination, where we origin from, and what are the things that, that, that God did to even get us here. And it says where we came from. Where we came from is the title of the message. People put dirt on your name is a starting place, not an ending place. And that's that's critical to know. You know, if someone tries to throw dirt in, on, on you or they try to make you look bad or something like that. I ain't nothing but a starting place. You know what it's like to come from dirt and come from nothing because that's what we did. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says, The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So it's so powerful to know where you came from. There is no such thing as you getting too low that you cannot get back up from because you started at the lowest of the lowest spot. And so God knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly where he was going with us. And then it's up to us to remember where we come from. And I am I'm a classic example of trying to forget where I came from and trying not to live that, that particular way or, or make sure no one recognized me according to what I came from just because of family history. And, and, and God was like, no, you know, you need to know, be, know where you come from and be okay with where you come from so others can see that they can get up from there too. The message of what you start with is not what you're stuck with. It's still the right message. And so you cannot go around denying where you came from because you don't want people to look down on you. Look, they're going to look down on you either way. It doesn't matter. But one thing you can say, when I was down, I knew to look up. And I want to say that to each and every one here. Don't, don't go and try to, to rescue yourself from where you came from. No, that's, that's part of who you are. That's why you're no longer there. It's where you came from. And so God created us out of the dust of the ground. And understanding that we are from the ground, we must start uh, from every day. We must uh, make seeds that much more important. And so from the ground, seeds are vital. Seeds are important. We got to understand that we're from the ground. Seeds are going to take root. You have to watch what you put in you. You have to watch what you watch. You have to be careful. Those seeds are going to grow because we are ground. We are the ground. And so it is important that we put the word in us and put it in us. So Matthew 4, 1 through 4. Put it in us daily. Put it in when you don't need it so it'll be there when you do need it. We are ground. These are seeds. Every seed that we plant into our life or we allow planted into our life is going to grow. We can say all we want to. You know, your people on diets, they try to pray the sugar out of cake and say don't or try to pray that the cake, the sugar don't affect them. Man, stop that. Stop eating cake. Stop planting the seed. And so we have to go forward. Remembering what God used to create us is the place we must start from every day because the minute we raise ourselves, it removes us from the foundation to grow from more godly seed. So if I'm so busy trying to go, I don't want to look like the ground. I don't want to look like the dirt. I don't want to look like, I'm going to elevate myself. I, I'm going I, I to come up. Well, when we do that, God is still planting seeds in us. And so now if I've risen myself mentally, emotionally above the ground, there's no place for God to plant in me. And that's the dangerous part because then we say, well, I got this element and this, this place of growth in my life. I got this place of being, but I forget where my stuff comes from, right? I know where my help comes from. It comes from the Lord. But if now I'm too, I'm too big to go down and, and get before God and lower myself to get into the presence of God, I'm going to miss out on a seed that needs to be planted in me for me to get through this difficult situation. And not only this difficult situation, but the next difficult situation, I got to quit trying to elevate myself and let God be the one that promotes me because can't nobody promote zero like God can. can. Can create us out of nothing and then use the lowest form of something to create us from nothing. Everything you got is a blessing. Everything we are is a blessing. And so we have to go back and go like, God, I, I repent 
for getting too high and mighty to listen. I repent for thinking I knew all there was to know about faith and righteousness and holiness. I, I repent, Lord God, for not sitting there under the authority of wisdom so I could grow some more. Lord, help me be understanding to what you've called me to be. It's, 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 a, it's a word prayer. It's a prayer of authority. It's a prayer of submitting. You know, whenever you stop learning, you stop growing. And a lot of times believers are at their place where they last learned. And so we have to stop and go, okay, God, what did I do? Why did I pluck myself from a learning position? Because I thought I was in a knowing position. It's got to be where we come back and say, God, help me to get back to where I can learn again. Uh, and so it, it is remembering what God used to create us is, is that place. It's that place to get us a foundation. The fact that we get attacked so much uh, could be the proximity this, that the serpent was cursed to crawl on his belly. But understanding that God raises us from dirt means he is always under our feet. And we've got to understand when in the garden in, in Genesis 3, the, the, the serpent was cursed to crawl on his belly. Well, I'm made out of dust and earth. It was so relatable that his belly would be on the grounds. But again, standing up, that there's a breath that came on us that caused us in our ground to stand up. The enemy is always going to think he has a right to crawl on you. He may have a right to start there, but he don't have a right to stay there. You got all the power of God on you to make sure he doesn't stay there. That is your place. That is your possibility. That is your growth. And he say he cannot stay on you. He can't plant anything in you. So he can't. He wants to just roll around and act like he belongs there. No, you stand up. You shake the dust off your feet. You shake the devil off of you. You shake the attack off of you and realize there's no place too low for God. God's got me. God's going to lift me up and he's going to bless me. But understanding that's why there may be such an attack and the enemy wants it that way because the proximity of where we are he is the proximity of being dirt. And that's where he's called to crawl on. But he forget that we, but there was a breath of life. There was the breath when God breathed on him, Adam became a living soul. God breathed on us and we became a living soul. Made from dirt keeps us humble. And having the breath of God is, gives us authority to walk in the power over the evil in this world. So it is my humility that I turn to God at all times and stay before God at all times, trusting him with all of my heart, soul, mind, and body. Now, again, that's right. I am. And we hear people, I'm just a sinner saved by God. Yes, you are. You also have the breath of God in you to walk in power and walk in authority. You are saved by grace. We know there's nothing you could do to be saved, but there should be something that you're doing because you're saved, because you've come out of darkness and into the marvelous light. You don't have to have so much night vision because you got the light of God's vision on you. So again, that is, that is a correct story. That is a correct statement, but finish the cinema and God breathed in me and I became a living soul. So I respond to the life of my soul more than the darkness of my living, the darkness of my situation. And so God's power is upon us to do just that and bless the time that we're in. And so he, he calls us before him to be a blessing. Yes, we are saved. Yes, we are born again. Yes, we could not do anything. We were poor. We were wretched. But he breathed on us and we became a living soul. Not the dead getting trampled, but the living walking in authority and walking in power. Uh, and so it is, I, I, will, I will feel powerless when I'm just associated with what I'm made from. But the minute I come up for air by, uh, by being in God's presence, I will be strengthened to go forward for the things of God. So if I'm only talking about the dirt that I am, I can, I can actually smother myself, smother my growth in God. I can actually kind of drown in just the fact that I came from dirt. I can do that. I can do that. You hear people talking about that all the time. And I can drown just because I want to stay in a low place when God has given me everything to be in a high place. He says to come up and, and begin to go forward. Come up for air. I breathe in you. You became a living soul. You don't have to just exist around the world. You don't have to just exist around your problem and survive. No, God has called us to thrive in this world. That's why he breathed in us to come up for air. As we come up for air, God grows us through that air. If we are feeling down, lost, or overwhelmed, 
are overwhelmed, it is time to plant a godly seed and have something in our life that breathes the breath of God. So don't let that, the motives and the, and, the, and the attacks of the enemy get a hold of you. Get the seed of God in. You still ground. You still got, you still the ground. You're still that place that can cherish a seed from God, cherish a word from God and begin to trust God, but to plant his godly seed. How much is too much money? How, whatever amount that keeps us from trusting God. The thing that is too much or too little is when it keeps us from trusting God. How much is too much pain is whatever makes us stop trusting God. See, a lot of times we talk about money. Well, money was money. I Man, five dollars can make some people quit trusting God. Ten dollars can make people quit trusting God. And has that the rich? Well, if you say no, then that's not necessarily true because five dollars is a rich to some people. Whatever amount that makes you quit praying and trusting God to be your source, that amount is too much. Whatever you've allowed to become a pain in your life so much that you've stopped trusting God, that's too much. We want to turn that God is my breath. He is the air that I breathe. And so both are defeated by planting seeds. The greed and seed oppose each other. When you plant, greed don't stand a chance. When you go out and give and sow in others, greed don't stand a chance. The ground is a foundation that establishes us and reestablishes us back to to where we started and what the Spirit of God had made us up, where the Spirit of God had made us upright. There will never be another day in our life that we will have nothing. So once you became born again, the seed of you, the seed of a giver, the seed of, of what God planted and made you from, you're, you're recognized in it and established on it. We have the ability to discern the voice of God, listen to the voice of God, and obey the voice of God. And that makes us filled with the seed of God. I'm never down to nothing. In Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22, it says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest time, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So one thing we must remember about the flood is that it, it didn't destroy the ground. And after it was done, eight people and the ground was left. Think about your life. All the things that have flooded your life and attacks against you. You knew, I still believe in Jesus. I still have God. I still got the grounds of my faith. I may not be where I want to be, but I know I got something that's always with me. I got the grounds of my faith. So the eight people get off and they get off to walk on ground that stayed, grounds that remain. You remain, you remain, you still have the joy in those Bible studies inside of you. After the flood, God said the earth would establish seasons and we all have seasons in our life but they should never keep us from planting what God desires for our life. So we go through seasons. He even said there'd be seasons, hot and cold and heat and summer and winter, day and night. They shall not see. We're going to have seasons, but don't ever let the seasons stop you from what God desires for your life. Never allow a season of frustration make you forget where you came from and what lie, what lie, what uh, what lives inside of you. Don't ever let it make you forget where you came from. That lives inside of you. It's because you're in a season, that don't mean you need to forget where you came from. In Galatians 3.13, we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. And so look how this is tied together and connected with what God was doing. Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. And like God promised to never send another flood, we must understand that whatever comes against us from is, isn't from God, and we have authority to come overcome it. Now, again, people got to get a hold of this because people think that God is punishing them, and it's not. Just like God is not going to send a flood. He said the rainbow was a symbol that he'd never destroy the earth again. The enemy can destroy you again. Once you've accepted Christ, you keep coming toward God. Keep coming toward the very presence of God. He's not trying to destroy you. He is trying to bless you and bring life into you. Everything that you do 
This is to bring forth life and the life of God. So Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. And like God promised to never send another flood, we got to understand the same promises for us too. Isaiah 59, 19, when the enemy comes in, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. So he's correlating with the verses all through the, the, the Bible. No matter how hard the enemy comes at us, he cannot destroy our foundation of faith. And Job revealed this to us. And when we keep our foundation, when you keep your land in spot, it will produce double what than what we started with. Keep your foundation. You ain't slipping. You got plenty of rock under you. You got plenty of base under you. What stop focusing on losing on 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 losses um, and look longer, closer, and thankfully at something we have already been given and and, and presently have. This is the standard of God's spirit that rises against the enemy's attack. So I got to quit focusing on losses and what I don't have and start to focus on what I do have and be thankful for it. So that's the progress of me returning. Man, God, I'm thankful that you picked me up out of the dirt. You made me from the dust of the ground and then breathe into me. So I'm thankful for that. I'm not going to focus on losses. I got a lot to be thankful for. I'm winning. In James chapter 4 and verse 2, it says, Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. A seed of nothing guarantees a season of nothing. I think that's powerful. When you do nothing, you get nothing. When you ask for nothing, you receive nothing. When you refuse to plant in the seed, you're going to have a season that is in refusal mode. That's in non-existing mode. This also works during an attack. If we don't turn toward God and begin to sow prayer and thankfulness, we will, have, we will not have victory and peace. I can't forget where I came from. I know that there was a tough spot, but that God used that to make me who I am today. Don't let that be pulled away from you. Don't let the enemy steal your foundation. Because again, if you have a little bit of success and the enemy thinks you should always be up here, you'll start to reject God when you go through something. And God says, no, I didn't tell you you were always going to be up top. What I told you is that we've got eternal glory in the, in the very midst of our lives. That's the on top part. You're trying to stay on top in the world. I'm trying to stay, make you stay on top in the word. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. So stay on top in, in the word of God. And as God begins to bring this to us, I understand that. Because see, when I got everything, then I tend to make God not be a part of anything. But see, when I have nothing, I want God to be my everything. Listen, understand where you came from and God will always be to you your everything. Because you know that you didn't arrive here by yourself. You know there was nothing you could do to get here. It had to be God. It had to be the strength and power of God in your life that grow you. So seed time and harvest time will always be as long as the earth remain. Heat, cold, winter, something like you, you understand there are seasons in your life that begins to grow you. And as a husband or as your spouse, as whatever it may be, you've got to get back to the part, God, as I am, the lowest part, use me, plant in me what you need to plant in me. I surrender, surrender to God. And, and even in this, in Mark chapter four, verse three through nine, it says, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of, the, of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns and thorns grew up and choked it out. And it yielded no fruit. And others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some a hundredfold. hundred. And he said unto them, He that had ears to hear, let him hear. 
And such a powerful book. We, we understand the parable of the sower. And you can see great seeds. I mean, think about how many times you've dropped some encouraging words, some great words. some You've heard great words and then they only lasted for a little bit and was gone. It's because you didn't let them get to your foundation. And sometimes if our foundation is covered up by our little bit of, 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 of growth or a little bit of blessing, but we ain't letting the foundation have access to the great seeds and it's landing on what we can do and what we used to do and what we're able to do and what we what we got and listen the seed is falling by the wayside and it's getting scorched and it's getting choked out because we're not letting God access our grounds we're still thinking we can hide things from God no let him have the grounds because once it falls into the ground that's when it matures that's when it blesses that's when it multiplies when it can have access to the ground quit trying to stay higher than what God called you to be Start just walking with God. That's the highest place you could be anyway. So when, when, uh, when we are about God, our creator, the ground we live in will, be all, will, will always be receptive to the seed of God and will respond with growth. If you are praying this prayer, God, why didn't I just listen to you? If that's the case, now pray, God, help me keep my ground up front. Help me keep it up front so that when the seed of your direction and your discernment come to me, it can get in me and get rooted in me and grow out of me. And I will no longer be asking, why didn't I listen? I'll be thanking you for your voice and for making me plowable for the will of God. And Lord God, that's what we pray. That's our prayer. Lord God, help us to get back to the basics, to the ground roots of our faith. Help us get back to the place that you've called us to be. This word from Jesus speaks to the soil just as much as to the seed. And it doesn't matter what comes against us. Protect your soil and growth will happen. I mean, you begin to say that growth will happen. God, I'm not ashamed of me anymore. I'm not, I'm not uh, 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 hating from where I came from. I want to grow in you. Here it is, God. And allow growth out. Allow the breath of God to breathe on you. Come up for air. God has got a breath in you to make you come alive like you've never come alive before. And he's going to minister to you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you as the word says that he that has ears to hear, let him hear. Father, we thank you that our ears are good ground. We thank you, Lord God, our heart is good ground, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, that the seeds of your word, the seeds of your prophecy falls on us, it's going to produce growth. Lord, we thank you for it. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.